Hi guys, we're back with sessions 24. Today we're going to talk about electrolyte imbalances, the signs and symptoms, the causes, and hyponatremia, hypokalemia, hypomagnesium, and hypokalemia, a lot more. First, let's start asking ourselves the question, what are electrolytes? And to put it simply, because there are bigger scientific explanations for it, but to put it simply, they are minerals in the blood and the body that give the electrical charge necessary to keep the heart, kidneys, nerves, and other vital organs functioning well. Too much or too little can cause serious problems. Now, what might we consider an electrolyte? Sodium, potassium, calcium, chloride, bicarbonate, and magnesium. These are all electrolytes. What symptoms would you expect to find if a patient was lacking in electrolytes? Fatigue, tired muscles, leg cramps, even seizures, yes you can, EKG changes, chest discomfort, you might find in the case of some patients a decrease in urinary output if the kidneys are affected, an increase if it's the pituitary gland, uh, edema, even swelling can even be on the brain as a result of electrolytes being imbalanced. Next we're going to talk about the causes of electrolyte imbalance. What might cause it to happen? Excessive sweating. Take the case of the runner. Very often people buy these sports drinks to help them to get back some minerals and so in their systems because they know that they deplete their natural uh, resources. Fluid loss also across the runner and so we just spoke about. How about dehydration? And take the case of the desert climate. Dehydration may very readily go unnoticed because you sweat and the humidity is very low and you're not aware that you're sweating. And that's why you have to pay close attention if you're in a desert climate and you're walking to replenish your supplies of electrolytes, maybe eating some fruits like bananas, drinking extra water with minerals in them because it can happen. Uh, dehydration, and we talk about excessive vomiting, blood pressure medications, diuretics such as Lasix, potassium, causes potassium depletion, um, massive blood loss might also cause it, and treatment will be directed of course at the cause. Whatever is causing the problem, that's what's going to be addressed. Now we're going to get more specific. Let's take the case of the hyponatremic patient. This patient has low sodium, normal sodium being 135 to 145. What can happen as a result of having a sodium that's too low or too high, patients may have seizures. And I worked in a brain unit. We had many patients who had to have sodium tablets to get their sodiums back to normal. Or if their sodiums were very high, we'd have to give them extra free water until the sodiums came down. And of course, the blood is always checked to make sure that the sodium is in the right place. You don't just guess the number. Now hypokalemia, potassium, it's very low potassium. This patient is having terrible leg cramps. Why? Possibly she's been on one of those diuretics like Lasix that's not very potassium sparing. Even on the EKG you can see changes, you get that U wave. The T wave is more flattened than normal. So you can look at an EKG and tell sometimes that something is wrong. Then let's talk about preeclampsia. It is not fully understood what causes preeclampsia, but one thing is clear, that magnesium is used in the treatment of these patients. If you should have a patient who is on a magnesium infusion, you need to pay close attention to the side effects of magnesium because you can have patients with a decreased level of consciousness, decreased respirations, muscle weakness, and many times also along with that you will have a decrease in tendon reflexes. The drug of choice for uh, treating the antidote is called calcium gluconate. And the normal calcium, I'm so sorry, the normal magnesium is usually about 1.25 to 2.5. Then we have the patient who has been to surgery. Just take a look. She's lost a lot of fluids. She can very readily have problems with electrolytes. Let's take the case of this patient here in the ER on the left at the bottom. This patient's in the ER. Look at the oxygen saturation. It's only 86. 
respirations are very shallow, something is obviously wrong. What could possibly have happened? Sometimes when patients have difficulty breathing, it's directed at their pH or so if you take an arterial blood gas and check it you might find the doctor will order something like bicarbonate sodium bicarbonate which is also an electrolyte when it's replaced you get a better breathing effort and things begin to improve then we have also hyperkalemia which is the opposite of low potassium when the potassium is very high patient may also have EKG changes a very tall T wave as you can see here which mimics uh, when a patient is having an MI or changes that you have with an MI. And of course, take a look at this patient in liver failure, large abdomen. This patient has got, along with liver problems, comes kidney problems. So what you would expect to find, these people have problems with excreting the normal way. The kidneys are not functioning properly. As a result, they may, their diets have to be changed. They have to conserve potassium and... Uh, sodium, the amount that's given to them, because their bodies cannot eliminate it. Hyponatremia also, which is hypo, which is very high sodium, you would expect the body to retain water. These patients can be very lethargic, skin is treks to the max. As you can see here, anasarca, which is just what is called generalized edema, and they have the potential for skin breakdown because the skin is so stretched. Sometimes they get oozing. And the problem has to be corrected, of course. The doctor usually takes a look at things like the albumin and so, so that it can be corrected. Then we have, of course, other problems that you can develop, but it will take time to go into all of these because there are so many things that you can go wrong when you have electrolyte imbalances. Please visit dearnurses.net and take a look at some of the topics there in chapters one and five would be very helpful. Stay posted for more clinical issues and have a great week.